HPCC Systems presents High Performance Computing Cluster Architectural Overview Part 1 Thor, Roxy, and the ECL Agent What is HPCC? HPCC stands for High Performance Computing Cluster. It uses massively parallel processing technology and is driven by LexisNexis ECL language. ECL stands for Enterprise Control Language. HPCC is fast and flexible. It can be used for almost any data-centric task and is highly scalable, able to meet any database need no matter how large the database. It integrates commercial off-the-shelf hardware with proprietary software, plugs into any computing platform, works over the Internet or over a private network, and operates on either distributed or centralized systems. Now in HPCC there are two different types of clusters. Thor, the data refinery, processes all data in all files. And Roxy, the rapid data delivery engine, which is used to search for any particular record or whole sets of records. Now HPCC stores and processes large quantities of data, so large that we invented our own term for this. We call this BORPS, billions of records per second. Now, HPCC also enables massive amounts of data across disparate databases to be accessed, analyzed, and manipulated in fractions of seconds. HPCC also functions as both a processing and distributed data storage environment capable of analyzing terabytes and now petabytes of information. Here's a diagram showing the system overview of HPCC. We start with the data delivery section on our left, shown here in the blue section and the data delivery section provides access to queries for end users. On the right side in the gold section we have the data factory. The data factory is where the Thor cluster resides and where data is transformed into more usable formats. Also this is where queries are tested and developed. Now in the course of this three-part video we're going to be taking a look at the HPCC application flow and in, in this diagram. Uh, we're going to start with the supercomputer layer at the bottom and focus on introducing you to Thor and Roxy. Now starting with Thor, there's a lot of stats here that we're going to throw at you here just to show you how powerful it is. The largest database file on our Thor is 7 billion records. Boolean search file, 100 billion records. Intermediate file generated in a production process, 5.2 terabytes. Most records generated by a production join 278 billion in 20, in 20 minutes. A 1 terabyte sort in 1 minute and 42 seconds. More than 24,000 data sets with multiple files are received and processed each year. 6 trillion records are processed every month. 1 million new records are added daily. And the largest work unit is a business header build that has 546 graph processes and the longest process is the person header which runs for 60 hours. Now on our right is the data delivery section, getting this data to our customer and we use Roxy to do that. Roxy in its configuration can process over 12 million queries daily. Also the largest number of queries for a single query type is over 4 million. The total daily processing time for daily queries is over 3.2 million seconds. The average response time for a daily query is a quarter of a second. The average peak simultaneous connection is 2,500 at any particular time. And the tested throughput of over 50 million queries per hour on an append of a link ID to a person complex query on a typical 100 node Roxy system. Now both Thor and Roxy work on the same cluster architecture and this is the beauty of the HPCC system. Again, we use the commercial off-the-shelf components and these components are all homogeneous and the system is tightly, tightly coupled. Although similar to a grid system, the nodes are managed in mass instead of individually allowing coordinated processing like global sorts. The LexisNexis HPCC software creates a unique data parallel processing environment the data refinery, again, which is Thor, and the rapid data delivery engine, which is Roxy. It also functions as both a processing and distributed data storage environment capable of analyzing terabytes and now petabytes of information. Here's the data flow of the HPCC. 
we take raw input data from multiple sources, structured and unstructured, in daily, weekly, and monthly updates. We pass it to Thor, which is the data refinery, which has a typical production Thor uh, in our own systems are 400 nodes, again giving us petabytes of storage and terabytes of memory. After the data has been processed and ready for use, we use a parallel copy pipeline which transfers the information to Roxy. Roxy has a few hundred nodes, typically a hundred node cluster, hundreds of terabytes of storage, and hundreds of gigabytes of memory. And finally, our users then, thousands of users, can access Roxy via web, SOAP, batch processing, and giving them sub-second response times. Now the last thing we'll look at in part one of this series is the ECL agent. The ECL agent, again, is the component that accesses the supercomputer layer. ECL agent, also known as HThor, is a single node process, single server for executing simple ECL queries. It, using the ECL agent for simple queries, it allows us to simplify the process and also may, may mean that they run faster. Now there are two circumstances where you can use the ECL agent. The first one is you can choose to use it as your target if you know your query will run at an acceptable level of performance on the single node. Also, you can choose the ECL agent if Thor is currently unavailable, but your query must still be simple enough to run on ECL agent. Now also, the ECL IDE will sometimes use the ECL agent automatically if the compiler determines that a query is simple enough to be run on the ECL agent, and also that queries are, that are not simple enough for the ECL agent are sent to an available Thor cluster. So ECL agent may need to read files, read files stored on Thor to process its own queries. And it's important to know that all non-Roxy queries will use the ECL agent first whether they execute on Thor or not. So ECL agent ensures that the resources needed to execute a query are available by number one, checking that the appropriate Thor cluster is first available, and number two, checking that a file it wants to read is not being written by another query. So this concludes part one of our look at HPCC. Thanks for watching.